Motivation is what gets you going. Habit is what keeps you going. Habits can be really hard to come by. They take time, they take commitment, but I will say pain is a incredible motivator. Some habits might help you to avoid sinking into depression. Uh, when I first moved home into my parents' basement, unemployed, with very little pain control, one of the things I made sure I did was get up every morning and get dressed. I had mostly work clothes in my wardrobe at the time, so a lot of times it was slacks and a button-down shirt. I would clean the bathroom or chat on a bunch of forums about researching my pain. I found that if I didn't get dressed, if I stayed in my pajamas all day, I was going to sink into a deeper depression. But even if the only productive thing I did that day was get dressed, it kept me feeling better about myself and encouraged me to be more productive. Some habits I'm still working on are writing things down and keeping an accurate calendar. I used to rely on anxiety and a really good memory to remember just about everything I needed to do. I almost never kept a calendar. I almost never wrote down tasks. Um, and my to-do list was almost always in my head. I'd occasionally write those down. Uh, so when I started having chronic pain and no sleep, and medications that interfered with my memory, all I had left was a lot of anxiety and no skills on how to keep track of my calendar and my schedule. And I did a lot of double booking myself and plain old forgetting about things. And it was a real struggle to try, and still is a real struggle to try and keep a calendar and keep track of what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help or explore new options. I've tried written calendars, phone calendars, writing things down on my hands, anything and everything I can to help myself remember when and what I'm doing. And it's, it's been probably one of the biggest struggles for me with, with this pain is how it's affected my memory and my ability to plan ahead and know what I'm doing and manage my time uh, because that was something I used to really that's something I used to really pride myself on and now it's just not there. One habit might be just learning to do less. I I was doing an activity where I would make myself a to-do list for every day as part of a self-improvement challenge. And I learned really quickly that I had a better day if I wrote a to-do list that included relaxation time. Whether I specified what that activity was or just set aside a couple hours to relax, I needed that time to rest and recharge. And I also needed to learn to throw out the to-do list if pain got bad. If uh, my own health and well-being needs to be more important than the things I want to do that day. And that is by far the hardest habit and thing to accept. Uh, that some days nothing on the to-do list will get done except that rest period. And that's okay. That doesn't make us any less valuable as people, as creators, as human beings. That's just how we need to work, because our bodies don't. I recently put together a pain kit. I discovered that lidocaine patches work very well for temporarily numbing my face, and so I wear them a lot when I'm out at work or trying to be social. I need scissors, the pain patches, and eyelash glue to attach them to my face, and I kept winding up with not having one of those three things. I either didn't have scissors, I didn't have the glue, I usually could keep pain patches on me, but without the things to apply them, they weren't very helpful. So I recently, actually just last week, put together a pain kit 
that I can move from purse to purse or lunchbox or pockets or whatever I have on me. And it just has those three things in it. Not all habits have to make sense to anybody but you. Even if you look crazy on the outside, if it helps you, don't be afraid to do it. One of the first things I started doing was wearing scarves. Once my face paint started, they became a must have accessory. Scarves in the winter don't get me a lot of funny looks, but I will say scarves indoor in the summer get quite a bit of attention. Air conditioning is immensely painful. Any place that has good air circulation causes me a crazy amount of pain. So I tend to wear scarves up over my face all summer because outside is too hot and inside is too cold. I, one of the biggest changes in my life is I cannot pull things in or out of a hot oven. So I like to bake, I like to cook, and I've had to learn to either do crazy reaching around thing, the side of the oven things if I'm home alone, or just get one of the people I live with to pull everything in and out of the oven. It's incredibly embarrassing to have to pull somebody away from whatever they're doing in order to <laughs> get dinner out of the oven. So I usually make my husband do it because he's going to eat the food too. Um, but not opening the oven saves me from hours and hours of pain. So I guess in the long run it's worth it. So one thing that's been life changing is my kitchen stool. This may sound silly, but I was listening to a podcast, which you should definitely look up, called Have You Tried Yoga? It's by two girls in Australia who uh, also suffer from chronic pain conditions. One of their episodes has a list of things that can help you deal with... Um, one of their episodes is on self-care, and it's basically just a list of things that can help you take care of yourself while you have chronic pain. And one of their suggestions was to get a stool in the kitchen so that you can sit while you stir a pot on the stove or sit while you do dishes or all those little things that we stand around in the kitchen doing. And I had never thought of this. I was always exhausted at the end of the day trying to make dinner and constantly walking back and forth between sitting at the kitchen table and cooking at the stove and I realized I had a stool up in the attic that I used as part of a dress form mannequin and I brought it down and it has been the most amazing thing to be able to sit and do dishes. It's just magical. Uh, so I highly recommend that one to anyone who, like me, had never contemplated this really obvious idea. So one of the hardest things to give up was ice. I used to love eating ice. I may, spent many a summer eating almost exclusively shaved ice for breakfast and lunch. I often would just grab a cup of ice and suck on it and munch on it during movies and watching TV. Uh, it was my comfort food, I guess you'd say was crunching on ice or sucking on ice. And now I really can't do that at all um, without causing extreme pain. I also used ice as kind of a weight loss snacking tool. Uh, if I was snacking on ice, I wasn't gaining any calories. And I haven't really found anything to replace that. So sometimes you just have to give something up and there is no good replacement. Some things are big. Some changes will be really big. I had to make the decision pretty early on that with this kind of pain, I couldn't work the full-time job that I had enjoyed and loved. And I've since been hopping from part-time gig to part-time gig. And uh, I'll do another whole episode probably about it, finding jobs and changing careers. So some changes might not even be socially acceptable. Uh, for me, brushing my teeth has gotten very hard. So 
Sometimes I will wait until the very end of the night to brush my teeth and I'll do it as quick and gentle as possible and hope it doesn't make pain so bad I can't sleep. Don't be afraid to do what's best for you physically, even when it changes all your plans. <laughs>